Welcome back to the War Grove of Well. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Ogre Mod Tribe's battling options. These large lads are here to eat up the competition. So let's just see how well they can do that. First up are the Ogre Gluttons. These guys have a six inch, re uh, excuse me, six inch move, six bravery, four wounds, and a five up save. They have two melee profiles, uh, clubs or blades, one inch reach, three attacks, four for the leader. Threes to hit, threes to wound, no rend, two damage. In addition, they all have gulping bite, one inch reach, two attacks, threes to hit, threes to wound, no rend, one damage. Three unique abilities, one and six can be a bellower, which gives minus one bravery for enemies within six inches. One and six can have a banner, which can do one of two effects depending on which banner you choose. One of the banners gives you reroll charge rows, and uh, one of them gives plus one to bravery. Additionally, uh, the unit, these gluttons have the little uh, Noblar familiars you can see in the front picture. Um, if the, these Noblars are still alive, the Ogre Gluttons get a 6 plus uh, missile ward. So if you're being targeted by missiles, you can get a 6 plus ward. Um, if you equip the unit with a pair of clubs, you get 6s to hit, explode. Or if you equip them with iron fists, you get sixes to save, deal a mortal wound back to the enemy. Um, so how this works is it's just kind of equipment choices. Um, pair of clubs and the uh, iron fists don't change the melee profile, they just change what special effect you get. So uh, it's really just a matter of do you want to be a bit more offensive or a bit more offensively defensive, if that makes sense. For Ogre Gluttons, these guys are your heavy chonky infantry. They are they have good damage if unreliable because of no rend. They have a lot of health, so they're pretty pretty sturdy boys. And honestly, I was expecting them to be a whole lot slower, but six inches for their girth and their health is pretty good. Um, to maximize the efficiency of Ogre Gluttons, take in squad sizes of six, and I would recommend equipping them with pair of clubs or blades and the reroll charge roll banner. Next up is the Iron uh, Guts. In order to take these, you must have a Gut Busters General. Uh, they have a 6 inch move, uh, 7 bravery, 4 wounds, and a 4 up save. They have 2 melee profiles, the Mighty Bashin Weapons and the Gulping Bite, the same Gulping Bite as the previous unit. For the Mighty Bashin Weapons, they have 2 inch reach, 3 attacks, 4s for the leader, 3s to hit, 3s to wound, 1 ren, 3 damage. For unique abilities, 1 and 4 can be a bellower, which gives minus 1 bravery for enemies within 6. Um, 1 and 4 can have a rune maw, which, how it works is if an enemy runs from Battleshock, you roll a dice, and on a 6, you add d3 models uh, that run. Kind of underwhelming, pretty meh, but it, you can have it, I guess. It's, there's no downsides not to taking it. Um, also, if you equip it with the Maw Rune, um, you get a 6 plus Spell Ward, which is nice. Uh, additionally, once per battle, if any of your Ogre models have Flee or Fled from Battleshock, you can get reroll hits, wounds, and saves for one turn. So, kind of a niche little buff, but pretty useful. So these are your heavier chonky infantry. They're more specialized in fear and morale tactics, which, as you know, they're kind of unreliable, but it's nice, I guess. Um, they're slightly cheaper than gluttons, but they also have fewer models. To maximize the efficiency of Iron Guts, take in squads of four to eight. They work best against low bravery armies, but are all right against other factions too. Next up are the Lead Belchers. To take these guys as battle line, you must have a Guts Buster General. Um, and at first I was a little unimpressed with the Lead Belchers, but after kind of looking over their war scroll and just kind of thinking about it for a bit, I can definitely see some value with these guys, if a little bit finicky, I would say. But um, th they definitely have some uses. For starters, they have a 6 inch move, 7 bravery, 4 wounds each, and a 5 up save. They have 2 melee profiles, the Bludgeoning Blows, uh, one inch reach, two attacks, three for the leader, threes to hit, threes to wound, one rend, two damage. They have the same gulping bite as the previous two units, and they have a missile profile, the lead belcher gun. 
It has a 12 inch reach, d3 attacks, 4s to hit, 3s to wound, 1 rend, 1 damage. And their only unique ability is tied to this lead belcher gun. If you have not moved in the same turn, you get d6 attacks each. Um, so that's kind of, that, that could potentially be a lot of attacks. So the lead belchers, they are kind of a close range shotgun infantry unit. Uh, they are great defensive units and objective holders because they they can get that extra shots without having to move. And they have pretty great melee capabilities for being a ranged unit. I think these guys can definitely dish out a lot of hurt and are best used when they're just sitting still and shooting at things or sitting on objective and kind of forcing the opponent to come get them. Uh, to maximize the efficiency of lead belchers, you want to take in squads of 8 to 12. I think having a large unit of these guys would be pretty sweet. Having 12 d6 attacks against any one unit can be pretty gnarly. Uh, next is the Mornfane pack. In order to take these guys, you must have the Beast Claw Raiders General. Uh, for stat line, and they have a 9-inch move, 6 bravery, 6 wounds, and a 4-up save. They have three melee profiles, the Calling Club or Prey Hacker, uh, or excuse me, Hacker, these aren't uh, orcs. Uh, the first profile has one inch reach, three attacks, three is to hit, three is to wound, no rend, one, two damage. The Gargant Hacker has two inch reach, two attacks, four is to hit, three is to wound, uh, one rend, three damage. And then the Mount attacks, the tusks, one inch reach, four attacks, force to hit, threes to wound, one rend, one damage. And then the leader in the unit gets the missile profile, the iron lock pistol. Uh, it's okay. It's a kind of a token missile profile. A 12 inch reach, one attack, force to hit, threes to wound, one rend, d3 damage. Uh, one and four can have a horn, which gives uh, plus one to charge. One and four can have a banner, which gives plus one to bravery. And um, sixes to save with the Iron Fist, deal one mortal wound back to the enemy. And uh, if you charge, the Tusk weapon, the mount weapon, gets plus one damage. So how the equipment on these guys works, like the Iron Fist and all that jazz, um, you can either take the Culling Club uh, and the Iron Fist or the just the Gargant Hacker. So Mornfang are a devastating shot cavalry. They are not the fastest in terms of cavalry, but they hurt a whole lot when you get to the enemy. Uh, to maximize the efficiency of Mornfane, I would take in squads of four and equip them with the Culling Clubs and uh, Iron Fist. I don't think the downsides to taking the Gargant Hacker um, really outweigh the benefits you get of having an extra damage pip. I really think that the best option is the Culling Clubs. Next, we have the first of two big beasties, the Stonehorn Beast Riders. Um, in order to take them as a battle line, you must have a Beast Claw Raider General. They have a degrading uh, chart for movement that starts at 12, 7 bravery, 12 wounds, and a 4 up save. They have three me uh, melee profiles, punches and kicks, 1 inch reach, 6 attacks, 4 to hit, 4 to wound, no rend, 1 damage, rock hard horns. Uh, two inch reach, a degrading chart for attacks so that starts at six. Force to hit, threes to wound, two rend, three damage. Then the crushing hooves, one inch reach, d6 attacks, threes to hit, a degrading chart for wounds so that starts at two, one rend, and d3 damage. It also has a few missile profiles the harpoon launcher, 20 inch reach, three attacks, force to, or excuse me, not three attacks, one attack, uh, force to hit. 3 is to wound, no rend, d3 damage, and then the chain trap, which is an optional equipment you can give it that um, has 12 inch reach, 1 attack, 4 is to hit, 3 is to wound, no rend, 3 damage. Uh, for unique abilities, you get plus 1 damage for the horns and hooves, or the mount attacks, if you charge in the same turn. It has a native 5 plus ward, and you can arm it with a vulture instead of the chain trap which you can pick an enemy unit within 30 inches and deal one mortal wound on a two up. 
So the Stonehorn is really simple. It's just a beefy rampaging beast that does a fairly sizable amount of damage. It's best used when charging through enemies to get that plus one damage on your uh, mount attacks. Um, it's, it's a pretty nasty combat beast. To maximize its efficientness, I would always have it charge when you possible uh, or when you want it to attack so you can get those pluses to damage. And I would equip it with the chain trap, not the vulture. I think that the vulture is nice, but in the grand scheme of things, would do less for you in terms of uh, the damage it can do and the value you can get out of it than the chain trap. Next up is the Thunder Tusk Beast Riders. These guys are similar to the uh, Stonehorn, they're just a little bit more um, ranged focused. They have a degrading chart for movement that starts at 8. Uh, they have 7 bravery, 12 wounds, and a 4 up save. For melee profiles, they have the same punches and kicks as the uh, Stonehorn. 1 inch reach, 6 attacks, uh, uh, force to hit, force to wound, no rend, 1 damage. Then they have the Colossal Tusks, 2 inch reach, 4 attacks, 3s to hit. Uh, degrading chart for wounds that starts at 2. Uh, 1 rend, d3 damage. And there is the same uh, harpoon and chain trap profiles as the Thunder Tusk, or excuse me, not the Thunder Tusk, the Stonehorn, but it also has a breath attack, the Frost Wreathed Ice. It has an 18 inch reach, and how it works is you roll a number of dice equal to the value on the damage chart, and each six deals one mortal wound. You add one to the roll if the target has 10 or more models, or if it has 20 or more models, you can add two to the roll. So it's best against horde type units. Um, it has a native minus one to hit in melee, and you have the same choice to equip it with the chain trap or the vulture. So the Thunder Tusk is very, very similar to the um, Stonehorn, except I think it's a little bit of a weaker ranged focus. It's best against hordes. I think it's kind of underwhelming. It's still really good. I just think that the Stonehorn is a bit better. Um, but there is something going for it in that it synergizes fairly well with Icefall Yetis, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, on the closing end of the battle line units are the Frost Sabers. In order to take these guys, you must have a Ice Brow Hunter. Uh, Frost Sabers are real simple. This will be quick. They have a 9 inch move, 5 bravery, 2 wounds, and a 6 up save. They have 1 meter profile, elongated fangs, 1 inch reach. Three attacks, force to hit, three is to wound, no rend, one damage, or excuse me, one rend, not, yes, one rend. Uh, for unique abilities, if you are near an Ice Barrow Hunter, uh, 16 inches to be exact, you get plus three to charge and plus two bravery. So Frost Sabers are interesting. They are really, really cheap, um, and they can kind of do a whole whole lot of things they're good at charging like if you get if you're near the ice prow hunter you have consistent charges um, they're good for screening and kind of probing enemy defenses to kind of either tie up um, critical units or threaten their flanks they're a little bit slow but you can still get value out of them being kind of on the outskirts of the battle um, if you want to take them i would uh, take them in squad sizes of two to four Last but not least are the Icefall Yetis. Uh, in order to take these as a battle line, you must have a Thunder Tusk General. Similar to the Sabres, they're pretty simple. They have a stat line of 9 inch move, 6 bravery, 4 wounds, and a 6 up save. They have claws and ice crusted clubs, 1 inch reach, 3 attacks, 4 is to hit, 3 is to wound, no rend, 2 damage, or excuse me, 1 rend. I apologize. Uh, and then for unique abilities, they have an innate minus one to hit in melee, and they are eligible to fight within six inches, and they have a six inch pylon. If they are within 16 inches of a Thunder Tusk, you can run and charge. So Icefall Yetis are a really cheap beat stick unit. They, um, they can dish out a lot of damage. Uh, they're very fast and flexible for the ogre mod tribes, um, but they're not as durable as uh, ogres. But that's okay. They're a little bit more of a, a glass cannon, I would say. Uh, 
Um, to maximize the efficiency of Yetis, take them in squad sizes of three to six um, and keep them near a Thunder Tusk if you plan to charge because having that run and charge is very useful. It gives you a lot of mobility options. Well, that was all of the Ogre Mod Tribe's battle line. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, as I've said in all of my previous videos, I have a Discord now, and I will leave that in the description below. If you enjoy this type of content, consider subscribing. If you like the video, please like or comment, and I'll see you guys next time.